Today, I, I want to focus on Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, mainly verse 6. By the time this message is over, you will have verse 6 memorized. We will quote it together. We will learn it together. We will study all the way through verse 8, and we'll finish up by going back to verse 7. So let's jump right into this. You ready? The Bible says, be careful for nothing. Be careful for what? Y'all with me? Be careful for what? That means don't worry about anything. That means don't be anxious. Stop freaking out. But in everything, by what? Oh, you sound really dead on that one. Let's try it again. Everything, we what? Let's say it again. But in everything by? Prayer. Barely got that out of my mouth. In supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts in your mind. I love, it's the mind too. God knows us so well. Your hearts in your mind through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, here we go. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, good news, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Can you say that together? Think on these things. Worry. <sighs> I worry a lot. You may not be like me, but I do have a tendency to worry. The word worry means to give away to anxiety or unease. It, to allow one's mind to dwell on difficulties or troubles. Now, if you said at the beginning of the service, you are not worried. Now that you know the definition of worry, are you worried? Anybody? Still a bunch of liars. Life is filled with worries. We are constantly dealing with anxiety and worry. Anxiety, which is the translation of this word careful in verse 6, uh, is one of the biggest problems in America. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States of America for adults 18 and older. It actually affects 40 million different people. That's overwhelming. And I want to clarify this. I want to make sure this is very clear. There are truly those that need medication, those that need medical professionals that will help them. I will never deny that. I know that's true. God is putting certain people in our lives, doctors in our lives, to help us. And, and, and I will never... Uh, overlook that or take that for granted. I think that's vitally important. And I think that's important for you to talk to your doctor if that's you in that position. But for those that are consumed with worry, we need to take a mental break. I want to talk to you. And I'm not saying those that have anxiety don't need to hear this too. If you have a serious medical issue of anxiety, you need to hear this too because it can help you. God's word never returns void. It'll help you. It's a wonderful medication just in a different way. So let's take a middle break this morning so we can talk about this subject of worry. And let's really dive in because there are truly those that need this. And there's some that may not need it at this moment but eventually you're going to need to apply some of these things because we all deal with worry at some point. Today we're filled with a world where uh, the world is filled today with this word worry. Do you think so? I, I think so. I think people are very anxious. I think they have anxiety. They're stressed out. And everybody has an opinion on what's going on. And none of them, I said this morning, the first service, none of them are good. They all seem negative. They all seem to me, a little bit frustrating. Um, this morning, I told them about the fact that I was at a yogurt place with my kids just this week. I think it was this week. And uh, we got done getting, we, we were just finishing up and we walked outside and the owner didn't have a lot going on because there wasn't a whole lot of people there. And he walks outside and he's talking with me, really nice guy. But then he starts opening up and telling me about his worries and frustrations. And there it came. I mean, just the floodgates were open and here it came. Here it came. And I'm listening. I'm getting a little anxious. And then this guy out of nowhere that was by his car, his wife was in the hair salon. He decided to join in. So he walks over. He says his opinion about what's going on. And he's worried about this and that. And he was just, I mean, in left field. And it was just like, where are we going? He said, you know, I've heard 
and it's, I believe it's true that they have found a planet that can sustain life and they are preparing that planet to transport us there. And I'm thinking to myself, are you serious? And then he topped it off with, I'm not sure if the Chinese or aliens are responsible for what's going on in America today. Maybe Chinese, the virus, but I don't know about aliens. All I know is you're making me very anxious and I just want to eat my yogurt. And that's constant. It's all the time. If you don't believe it, just look on Facebook, social media. Everybody's got their opinions and that's their outlet to show it. Let me tell you this morning, if you're, you have no worries, then that's unusual. And that's good, really, because worry is a sin. But if you do have worries, you're not alone. I worry. I worry about big things. I worry about little things. I worry about everything, pretty much. I worry, I said this morning, I worry if my head's too shiny. I don't polish it. I don't buff it. I just wash it. Cleanliness is next to godliness, and it just shines the light of Jesus. That's the way God made me. I, I, I worry if my breath stinks. I worry if I'm too short, too fat, too whatever. I worry about, every, just ask my wife. I worry. Because I'm just, I don't know. Judge me if you like. I'm just that way. You probably thought, I thought you never worried about anything. You're a, you're a man of God. You're crazy. I do worry. And if you worry, you're not alone. But that doesn't mean it's right. You say, well, we do live in crazy times. We do. We live in crazy times. I was telling Chris and some of the guys about um, what just happened like two days ago. My wife was outside, all right? This is the weirdest thing you're gonna hear. I have a lot of weird things happen at my house. My house is across the street and it's cursed. All the weirdos. My house is like a light and all the bugs just come to it. All the weird things happen. All the weirdos come there. My wife's in the front yard. <clears throat> yes, and we love weirdos, gotta say that because I'm a pastor, love them. But my wife is in the front yard, she's with the dog, and all of a sudden, on the left side of the house, the guy comes around the corner, he's jogging like this. He said, don't mind me, ma'am, she's just trying to kill me with a car. And my wife goes, what? And then a car from our backyard comes around the corner, through the front yard, chasing down this guy through the yard, and she's yelling out the window, I'm sick and tired of you, I'm gonna run you over. <laughs> my dog freaked out, he was so worried, not, not Hank, not Hank, he would have just attacked. But my, my other dog, Daisy, she was so worried, she took off running, she's looking behind, she don't even know the door's closed. She hit the door and rolled to the ground. Next thing we know, they're going down the road, he goes in the neighbor's yard, they go off, she goes off the road trying to run him over. Come to find out, they've been driving around in our backyard and we didn't even know it, having this dispute and her trying to run him over. Dave, you got nothing to be worried about. Yes, I do. <laughs> this is crazy. But if we allow anxiety or worry to rule our lives, then we have made a conscious decision to be controlled by our fearful thoughts. How many of our fathers here, would you raise your hand? Then you guys know how much stress sometimes you can feel when you're thinking about finances, not to say our wives aren't helping us with that, hallelujah for that, but you think about leading your family and the stress of being a good example and having a relationship with your kids is that, that's, that, that's a father, but somewhat of a friend, but there's a fine line there and all these things and emotions. But again, if we allow anxiety and worry to rule our lives, then we have made a decision, a conscious decision to, to live in fear, to be controlled by it. Jesus addresses this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought of yourselves, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, for which you shall put on from your clothes, to your food, to, your, the, to the very things you drink, don't worry about it. God says, it, Jesus said, it's okay. Everything's gonna be okay because there's somebody in control. Is not the life more, more than the meat in the body, than the raiment? Verse 26 says, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. 
Are ye not much better than they? He says this, allowing worry to control your life means that you're no longer trusting God to supply your needs. You, in essence, have made worry your new master. He said, the birds aren't even flying around freaking out going, what are we going to do this weather? We got to gather up as much food as we can and put it in the barn. The birds are got, they got more common sense than we do. And Jesus says, you're more important than the birds. I love birds, but you're more important than the birds. But it's funny how a bird has more common sense than we do with these things. And it's scary to think. Look with me at our original passage of scripture, Philippians 4, 6. It says, be careful for nothing. What's the word? That means don't be anxious. Do not be anxious about anything. Stop worrying. Do you realize this is not an option? Rather, it is a command. God has commanded us to stop worrying. Yeah, this is convicting for me. You may say, so how am I supposed to do that? You may say, can you not see what's happening around us? Does it not scare you? It is the end of the world as we all know it. It is all coming to a close. Woo! I just can't take it anymore. Pastor Dave, how am I supposed to keep a clear mind with all this chaos? <sighs> Let me clarify this morning, okay? If you do not wage war on worry, then your worries will overcome you in victory. It is time for God's people to have victory over worry. It's time to wage war on the worries of our life. And the Bible tells us how in this short, simplistic passage of scripture in Philippians. In order to win the war on worry, we have to follow Philippians chapter 4 and listen what it says. Okay? Let's go to God in prayer and we'll jump into this. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we completely commit this to you because without you guiding and directing our thoughts, we will get nothing out of this. Lord, speak through me and use me for your honor and your glory. Help those that are fret, fearing and fretful and Lord that are worried, help them to have peace of mind today in Jesus' name, amen. All right, is everybody focused? All right, let's jump right into this. Step one, to overcome worry, to win the war on worry, you have to identify your worries. Stay, say it with me, identify your worries. That was so dead. Let's try it again. Identify your worries. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Like I said, by the time we're done, you'll have this memorized. Be careful for nothing but in everything, everything by prayer and supplication. You cannot fight a war against something if you don't know what you're warring against. What are the reasons we worry? What keeps you up at night? What captivates your mind and your way of thinking? Do you know what it is? What is your primary worry in life? Does it dominate you every single day? Is it your master? What comes to your mind when you think about fear? Think on that. Worry comes when you have no truth to the source of your fear. In other words, you're assuming without knowing. I've done that so many times. It's the what if factor. It, it, it's assumption without facts. Let me clarify, concern is distinctly different. Concern on the other hand is a calculated consideration of an actual danger. That is normal, that is understandable, that is not a sin. That is something as a parent or grandparent, that is normal for you to do. But there's something different when it comes to worry. Everything in your life must be evaluated but weighted by truth. Everything. That's why the word everything is used in Philippians 4, 6. Everything must be sifted through God's word in prayer. God's word will always reveal the truth. It never returns void. It is important to understand when reading God's word in prayer that God is trying to show us something that we're dealing with. Because we know God's word is true. And prayer gives you peace. Now you say, I'm not sure I completely understand. God's word reveals provision of the heavenly father. It shows us that. 
That's why Paul wrote that everything is the proper subject of prayer. Every area of our lives is a concern to God. That's why my favorite verse is Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean unto, not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will what? Direct thy paths. By sifting everything, all in prayer and truth, you can identify what triggers your worries. You can identify what triggers your worry in your life and those worries and what they are. It is so important to understand. But let me inform you, the war on worry is compromised if you do not develop a lifestyle of prayer. Which brings me to step two, when we're winning the war on worry. You ready? Step two, develop a lifestyle of prayer. I want you to say it with me. Develop a lifestyle of prayer. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything. That means identify every area of worry by prayer and supplication. Prayer and supplication. These two aspects of prayer are similar but distinct. Let me explain. Prayer is a broad word that can mean any or all communication with God. But supplication is directly asking God to do something. Prayer is a constant available communication with God. It, it, it literally is direct line to the throne room of God. That is amazing. Back in the day, we used to have a home line. How many still have that home phone? Yeah? Few? Okay, very cool. Still remember mine when I was a kid. Two five six seven seven eight eight three three five. It's boom stuck in my head. I remember calling home and getting this beep, beep, beep. You know what I'm talking about? A busy signal drove me crazy. I used to get so frustrated with that, especially when I knew who was on the phone. I knew, I knew Tony was on the phone. And I know who he was talking to. It'd be some girl that he was spending a lot of time trying to convince to go out with him. Because that's why it would just go beep and beep and beep forever. Because it would take so long for him to convince her. He's watching. I love you, brother. But the fact is, I had to wait to get my phone call answered. I had something very important that I was worried about that I wanted to speak to my mom or my dad but I had to wait. We used to have collect calls, long distant calls. You had to pay for a long distant call. You remember that? Yeah. I used to preach at the jail and I don't know why, I was just a young guy, a young preacher and I'd give out my phone number to a bunch of convicts. I just like, you just call me anytime. You know how many times I got a collect call from the prison? Over and over again. You know how many times my mom would say, you're paying for that. You might be a young preacher reaching souls for Jesus Christ, but that costs money. But there is no collect calls. There's no long distance when it comes to God. We are so blessed to have the technology we have today. Our phones provide us with limitless communication, but we are more blessed when we learn that our prayers bring us to limitless communication with God Almighty, the creator of the world. Billy Graham said it this way, a man is more powerful on his knees than behind the most powerful weapon that we as Americans have ever created. We sometimes don't realize what power we have through prayer. The answer to your worries begins with your conversation with your heavenly father. Yes, you obviously have to identify what your worries are so you can bring it before the Father. But let me tell you something. The Heavenly Father is there to provide your needs, even hear your worries. One of the things I missed most about my dad, that he's, you know, he's passed away. It's been some time now. One of the things I miss most about my dad is the ability to pick up the phone. I still do this just to do it. Siri, call dad. Just to hear it ring. And then, of course, there's no voicemail or anything anymore. I love that period of time that I'd pick up the phone and say, hey, Dad, and talk about a bunch of nothing. Just talk. And then there was times that I called my dad and I was just worried, mainly about my van or my car or truck or whatever. And we'd talk about it. We'd talk about the transmission, and I'd say, Dad, 
I just want to talk to you about this. I'm worried that my transmission's going out. Dad would tell me what he thought was going on, and I'd say, well, it's doing this and this, and he'd say, ask me a few questions. In return, I would hang up the phone with peace because what I thought was a problem and I was worried about wasn't a problem at all. And my father gave me peace of mind, but it was because he communicated with me. You may find yourself at ease after you have talked, vented, or opened up to a friend or a counselor, but the greatest satisfaction, the greatest satisfaction of communication comes through prayer because your heavenly father speaks back to you in a still small voice and he brings you peace. Some of you just haven't tapped into your prayer life. Very few times will you walk away with peace after venting to a friend. You might feel better. You might be like, man, I feel a lot better. Get that off my chest. But the peace may not necessarily be there. Let me remind you of this. Prayer is a lifestyle, not an event. That's why 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says it this way. Pray without ceasing. What's the word? Pray without, without ceasing. Prayer to a Christian should be as natural as breathing. If I were to say to you, breathe without ceasing, you could understand because that right there, breathe without ceasing, would mean you're going to die. There's no life. That's understandable. Your prayer life has to be a natural part of your life. In order to successfully win the war against worry, it needs to be natural a natural thing to talk to the Heavenly Father. Do you realize that God, your Heavenly Father, is concerned about your concerns? Has that dawned on you? First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Every area of baggage in your life, he wants you to leave at his door and let the Father handle it. You say, well, I just walk away and I still feel a little bit of that pressure. I still think on it. I think on it. That is a problem we'll handle on step four. Some of you have not mentally had rest in your life in a long time because you're so worried. Listen to this. Psalms chapter 55 verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Matthew chapter 1 verse 28. Come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden. I will give you, what's the word? Rest. Rest. I'll give you peace of mind. We're to bring every worry and concern to God. You, you're walking around with too much burdens in your life. You need to start talking to your father more often. From the smallest worries to the greatest worries, seek God. Every area. The reason so many people live in worry is because they don't have the lifestyle of prayer. God wants us to thread. Listen to this. God wants us to thread every area of our life with him. He wants to be a part of everything you do in life. Whether it's buying a car, whether it's the way you discipline your children, whether it's the way you're about to speak to your wife or your husband, you are to pray. Just as if you are walking in the room breathing naturally, you're thinking naturally, you're praying naturally. God, I need your direction with this. I need your help. Please give me the wisdom I need. God wants you to thread him through every aspect of life. Whether it be pain or praise. Because we got both according to James chapter 5. Because life is either something painful or something joyful. And no matter what it is, we either are on the mountaintop or in the valley. We need to praise God. We need to seek God. We are either in worry or in victory. But no matter what, I still seek the Father. No matter what, no matter where you are in life, whether it's good or whether it's bad, let your requests be made known unto God. Now listen to me. And when you do that, the blessings of God become more evident, which brings me to the next step. Are you all ready for the next step? Good. But here it is. Step three. Cultivate a spirit of thanksgiving. Say it with me. Cultivate a spirit of thanksgiving. Now that we've already read this about four times, I want you to read it aloud with me. Philippians chapter four, verse six. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. 
Let your request be made known unto God. Thanksgiving is a key component to prayer. Thanksgiving comes up literally 71 times in the New Testament, and there's a reason for that. The definition of thanksgiving is to show one's gratefulness, his thankfulness, to be grateful and thankful. We really have, we, we really have an opportunity in our lives that we don't have to be living in anxiety. We have an opportunity in our lives where we can pray about everything. We have an opportunity in our lives that we can be thankful for anything. But here's the problem. In order to get to that place in our lives, we have to cultivate the spirit of thanksgiving. Listen to what the Bible says in Psalms 91 verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It's a good thing. That just makes sense. It's good to give thanks to God. And here's the reason why. Because it guards against a whining, complaining spirit before God. And when you let your request be made known and you come before God with thanksgiving, it revolutionizes the way you speak to your heavenly father. It, it, it is a proven fact that, that if you cultivate a spirit of thanksgiving, and, and you are less, then you are less likely in your life to be filled with worry. Those that are most thankful are less worry. They are not filled with fear. How do you know somebody in your life that is constantly on a, on a high for Jesus Christ? They, they just seem so spiritual. You ever been around somebody like that? I, I have a number of friends that don't live here in Ohio that are constantly grateful and thankful and they're rejoicing. You can see it on their face. It's all over them. They love the Lord. They love what he's doing. They're not ashamed of it. But it is difficult to have a thankful spirit. It is scientifically proven that the more grateful you are, the happy you are. The more you express thanksgiving, the happy you are in life. God designed us to be happy and worry-free. Remember in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, we're told to pray without what? Ceasing. If you follow along in that passage of Scripture a little further, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Every area of life, give thanks. It's hard to fo uh, focus on your worries, isn't it? It's hard to focus on your worries when you start acknowledging your victories. I have found that I am less likely to complain about things when I look at the blessings. But it is a necessity to get to the point in your life to cultivate a spirit of thanksgiving in order to overcome the worries of your life. Step four. Last one. You ready? Step four, have the right mindset. Say it with me. Have the right mindset. Say it one more time. Have the right mindset. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. That exhausts me just thinking about trying to constantly be thankful and have the right mindset because my mind is constantly going. Your mind go a lot? Women are amazing, aren't they? They just... They could be working on this and thinking about this and then you walk in there and say, where's my keys? And they know exactly where that is. I'm not that way. I tend to focus on one thing and one thing alone. You know, you probably have learned that about me. If you see me in the hallway and I need to be in big city and you're like, Pastor Dave, can I talk to you for just a minute? Man, just going through a lot of stuff right now. And you're looking at me and I'm like, Ugh. I'm only thinking about, I got to get to big city and I got to do this. No, it's not that I don't love you. I do love you. Nobody's ever going to talk to me again. I'm just being transparent. The fact of the matter is a lot of men are like this, but that can be a negative effect in my life because sometimes when I'm upset about something, that becomes my mindset, that area. I can't think about anything else. All I can think about is this. When I build a VBS stage and I have everything together, I'll think about one aspect of that stage that nobody will see, but it's driving me crazy. And I forget about what matters most. The souls of the children that are coming, not some flying saucer or whatever we create on the stage. You have to have the right mindset. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. We're going to skip verse 7, go to verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Paul makes it clear in order to have victory over worry, 
Step four, you have to have the right mindset. Philippians 2.5 says it this way, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm gonna read that again so you clearly understand. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. To think like Christ, you will have to change the way you think if the world has already manipulated your mind. The way you have allowed the world to make you think can devastate you when it comes to victory over worry. The Bible addresses this in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? Renewing of the mind, of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I don't know about you, but I am tired of the world controlling my mind. I'm tired of just wanting to simply look at people's lives and rejoice with them about their party or something that they went to or a a vacation uh, and and see that on social media and say, that's uh, give it a like or yeah, that's great, that picture looks good. I'm tired of going on Facebook and seeing negative, negative, negative and doom, doom, doom. Because what it's doing is taking my brain like a piece of Play-Doh and going, yes, think this way, act this way, respond this way, be this way. And then the war on worry begins to go into the hands of Satan for him to win. Because by the time he's done, my brain just, well, it already looks like mush, but it looks worse. Because he has had his way with my brain. Do you realize if you get enough of that crammed into your brain, you will become that way as a person? You'll start thinking that way. Negative, negative, negative. Doom, doom, doom. Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as he thinketh in his heart, we know that's who he is. That's who you are. Where are you at? What kind of negativity has affected your life? Is that become your mindset? Because if it is, then there has to be a renewing. You get around negative people enough, you'll become a negative person. How many believe that? If you don't believe that, just watch your kids. Because your kids become what their friends are, or what they're listening to, or what they're watching. Because they're so easily adapted and adjusted and twisted according to whoever is the biggest influence in their life. Here's the fact of the matter. We get that way too. We get to the point in our lives that all we are is consumed with worry and anxiety and frustration and we cannot think clear. The reason why we don't win the war on worry is because we don't have the right mindset. And the reason we don't have the right mindset is because we haven't renewed our mind. We haven't renewed the mind. The word renew means to make like new, restore or refresh. Remember the verse It is very clear there has to be renewing, refreshing, restoring of the mind. It is a way of thinking. And that new way of thinking transforms you as a person. It really does. From the inside out. The word transform not only means that the way you think is different and transform, but also the way you look. And before you get too excited about that, it doesn't mean you're going to have a sudden weight loss or I'm going to have all my hair come back. It doesn't mean that you are going to have a sudden facelift. The fact is, it is very evident when somebody is weary and carrying burdens. It's all over their face. You can tell when somebody is worried about something. My wife says, everybody can read your face, Dave. You're the most obvious. How many would agree with that? I'm really curious. Is it true? My kids call it angry eyebrows. Dad, you got your angry eyebrows on. What does that even mean? That means your eyebrows, they go like this. Dad, something's bothering you. You can see it all over your face. If you're a father, does that aggravate you when your kids are doing that or your spouse? You're like, I'm fine. I'm just hungry. Leave me alone. But the fact of the matter is, it is evident when somebody has worry in their life and they're frustrated and they're distraught because it's all over their face. But the renewing changes that. It's biblically proven that when you have joy in your life, your facial expressions will change. That's why you're called the light of the world. A light is something you can visibly see. It's bright and obvious, but it's not too bright if there's worry involved. It is a very evident thing to worry and have anxiety. And that's why God has made a way for us to overcome it. 
Make your mental focus the word of God. Philippians 4, 8, every word in this passage is scripture. That is to be the right mindset. And if you forgot what it was, we'll read it one more time before we close. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, think on these things. Whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of good report, whatsoever things are virtue, whatsoever things be any praise in it, what do we do? We think on these things. So next time you find yourself reading something that you know is not going to be healthy for you, stop reading it because you're going to think on that and that is not going to change you for the better. Let's conclude. Sandwiched between Verse 6 and verse 8, Paul gives us the results of winning the war on worry. I love this verse. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It's going to keep it safe. The peace of God. It passeth all understanding. You've never experienced peace like this. You will have no worries. Your anxiety will Dissipate. You will be victorious. You will win the war if you can apply these four things because in the end, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds, both of them. It, it will protect you from being devastated by worry. When we have the right mindset, you will no longer focus on the what ifs of life. The Bible says it this way that will keep him in perfect peace. Perfect peace. Don't you love the word perfect in that verse? Perfect peace. That's something that nobody else can bring. Only God brings perfection. True perfection. God's peace and the world's peace are distinctly different. God's peace is different because it's perfect peace. The world's peace is temporal. Jesus' peace is eternal. The world's peace relies on the power of self, but God's peace relies on the power of Jesus Christ for the saints. The world's peace strives to find purpose in suffering, but God's peace is a free gift in the midst of suffering, starting with the gift of eternal life. John 16, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, problems, frustrations, worries, but be of good cheer. Don't you love that? Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said, stop freaking out. Stop worrying. Be of good cheer, believer of me. I have overcome the world. Stop worrying about the social injustice. Pray. Stop freaking out about coronavirus. Pray. Stop worrying about the finances. Pray, and the Bible says to trust. And when you do that, he will lead you and guide you in a path that will keep you safe. Are you ready to renew your mind and start focusing on God's promises? Are you to that point, you're ready to do this? That will keep him in perfect peace. Psalms 56, three says, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. When I am freaking out, because my car didn't start this morning. I'm trusting in you. When I am finding a new bill in the mail, I'm trusting you. I've been there, just got one the other day. It's like, what is this? This is from three years ago. How do you love the hospitals? You ever been there? Hey, when I find myself with my kids doing things that I'm like, what? I'll trust in thee. Because with every year of your children's lives, a new challenge comes, a new adventure, a new frustration, and a little bit of worry. I'll trust in thee. It's time for renewal. It's time to stop letting Satan win the war on worry. It's time to overcome your anxiety. It's time to overcome your worries. It's time to overcome your depression the way God intended it. It's time to wage war on worry. Are you ready to win the battle? If you're sincerely ready to win this battle, then I am challenging you to do this. Be a good soldier of Jesus Christ in rage war. Dad, be the best dad you can. And let your kids look in your eyes and see courage of Jesus Christ. 
Mom, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Stop letting your home be a disarray of frustration, worry, and fear. Stop living in defeat. Because if you are, you will never be happy in a victorious Christian and you can never successfully reach this sin-cursed world because you have joined them in defeat. Are you all with me? I am just tired of the way things are. If you tell me this is the new normal, I'm going to tell you, shut your mouth. Because that's what Satan wants us to say. This is the way it's always going to be. I know who created the whole world. It ain't you. So just be quiet. Quit telling me what is always going to be. No, God's in control. And we are going to see something change, but it's going to have to start with some simple steps. And those steps start with you.